Right now, the entire planet is feeling the effects of the coronavirus. It is a global pandemic that has drastically changed our lives. Everyone is struggling, whether infected with the virus or not. In the midst of such a devastating calamity, where is God? Where is God? Episode 5, A Bad Hand. Many of us know people who have faced great adversity in their life without bringing it upon themselves. They struggle to enjoy many basic benefits of this life, but cannot be held responsible for what has befallen them. It's easy for us to blame a reckless motorcycle rider for a motorcycle accident, but can you blame a child that falls sick with cancer? Can you blame the jogger who gets hit by a car on the shoulder of the road? Often we describe these cases by saying these people have been dealt a bad hand. We're trying to say that these people didn't cause their own suffering. I want to share with you about a man who was dealt a bad hand. His name was David Brainerd. Born in Colonial, Connecticut in 1718, Brainerd lost both of his parents to premature deaths. He moved in with his older sister's family where he remained as a youth until he was admitted to study at Yale. It was around this time that he began to suffer from a serious illness that caused him to spit up blood likely tuberculosis. During those years of illness, Brainerd served as a missionary to Native Americans, but after seven years, his condition prevented him from continuing his work. He returned to Connecticut where he stayed with Jonathan Edwards, a famous preacher of that time, until his premature death at 29 years old. Brainerd is a man who many of us would say was dealt a bad hand, but how should we interpret the emotional pain of his parents dying young and the physical agony of his illness? What does the Bible tell us about why people suffer? I want to take you on a short survey of what the Bible says about suffering. We will first look at why people suffer and then spend time on the purpose of suffering, which is what the bulk of Scripture has to say on the subject. Our series is entitled, Where is God? And I want you to know that God closely connects with us in our times of suffering. Jesus spoke directly about why people suffer twice in Luke 13. When some unfortunate victims died because a tower fell on them in Jerusalem, many people thought that the victims must have somehow deserved to die. It's not so different from today when we try to find out the backstory about someone's problem because we want to pin the cause on the person. We want to say, he deserved it. Jesus dispelled the myth that people bring their own misfortune on themselves when he said that the victims of the fallen tower we're not any more deserving of such a tragedy as anyone else. The lesson here is that suffering is not always the fault of the victim. In the same chapter from Luke, Jesus provides a little more insight into why people suffer. He saw a woman who could not stand up straight because a disabling spirit kept her back bent over, maybe something like how scoliosis curves the spine. Jesus chose to miraculously heal her so that she could stand up straight again saying that she had been bound by Satan. The message here is that Satan causes suffering. Lastly, the Apostle Paul weighs in on why there's suffering when he states that the creation was subjected to futility in Romans 8.20. He is saying that all that God created was adversely affected when, in Adam, mankind chose sin over God. What God had created perfect was now imperfect. What God had created innocent was now corrupt. Suffering is a consequence of sin. From our brief discussion about the reasons for suffering, we learned, one, that suffering is not always the fault of the victim, two, that suffering is caused by Satan, and three, that suffering is a consequence of sin. But Jesus and Paul's teaching on the reason people suffer is only a small part of what the New Testament says about pain and suffering. Much more teaching is devoted to the purpose of suffering. This is where we will spend the majority of our time as well. For many of us, suffering seems to have no good purpose. All the bad things in our lives seem to prevent us from good things like happiness and progress. When we're sick, we feel that we cannot be happy even with the little things like our favorite ice cream. When we can't get the washing machine working, we feel that our progress is being hindered because there's so much we're missing out on. When Paul addresses suffering, He explains it as an experience that he shares with Jesus Christ. Listen to Philippians 3, 10 to 11. 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection of the dead. I think that many of us would be surprised to think that we could do things in our lives that are similar enough to what Jesus did to say that we are sharing our experiences with him. He seems otherworldly to many of us and not in tune with the kind of life that we lead. Paul tries to dispel that idea by telling us about the connection that we have with Christ through suffering. You see, you're closer to Jesus when things are difficult than when things are easy. Think about Jesus' life. It was more characterized by struggle than ease. So if you live with more ease than struggle, you're a bit out of touch with Jesus, and he was God on earth. When we wonder where is God, we've got to know that he is with us in suffering. Besides sharing our experiences with Jesus Christ in suffering, suffering is a great teacher. But how great of a teacher is suffering? Well, suffering taught Jesus Christ. That's right, suffering taught the God-man, Jesus Christ. Listen to Hebrews 5, 8 to 10. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Being designated by God a high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. We see in this passage that Jesus Christ learned obedience through what he suffered. Suffering taught Jesus obedience. I think this is a good example of just how closely Jesus relates to us. He learns just like we learn. When we suffer, we are also learning obedience like Jesus did. Even though Jesus was God's son, he had to learn obedience to his father's will. Maybe you can relate to having to obey your father as well. As we grow up, we learn obedience by doing what our Father says. But we also learn it when we don't do what our Father says through correction. In Jesus' case, he learned only by obeying because he never disobeyed his Father. But to illustrate how difficult it was for Jesus to obey his Father, on the night he was arrested, he told the apostles that his soul was sorrowful even to death. Of course, he was filled with anxiety because he knew he was going to be crucified, but he was also filled with temptation to disobey his father because he knew that he could say no to the crucifixion. It was God the Father's will that he be killed, but it was also Jesus' decision to proceed with it. Jesus said that no one takes his life from him. Jesus learned obedience from what he suffered because he continued to decide to obey his father's will to be crucified as the whole ordeal was unfolding. At any point, he could have ended the torture and execution. He was God. But he did not end it because he remained obedient to his Father. I think that Jesus' example shows us how we should learn through suffering as well. I think it is communicated a bit when we say that some things have to be learned the hard way. The hard way. The way of suffering. We have a sense that when things are hard, we can learn a great deal. I think the challenge for us is to learn to obey in the midst of suffering. God is not asking most of us to be executed like his son Jesus, but when he does give us suffering, do we obey him? Are we learning obedience? This is the most difficult part of suffering. This is why Jesus is as great as he is. He never disobeyed God while he endured suffering. Like Paul said earlier, sharing in Christ's suffering brings him closer to attaining the resurrection from the dead. We have the opportunity to share in the suffering of Christ in our own way. Each of us has different hardships to endure, but the challenge is to obey God through the hardship, and the goal is to attain the resurrection from the dead. During this time of the coronavirus, we will suffer in different ways. We have seen that suffering is not always the fault of the victim, that suffering is caused by Satan, and that suffering is a consequence of sin. More importantly, we now know that the purpose of suffering is to connect closely with Jesus Christ and to learn obedience. We don't think that people who suffer have been dealt a bad hand, no. Instead, we think that suffering is an opportunity. It is an opportunity for closely connecting with Jesus and faithfully obeying our Father. Memorizing scripture helps us to have the truth of the Bible with us always. For this message, memorize Philippians 3, 10 to 11 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in death, 
that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection of the dead. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us an example of faithfulness to God in suffering. We want to be like you, obeying the Father even when things in our life get difficult. Help us at this time of tragedy to learn from our experiences. We want to resist the temptation to turn away from what God wants for us during this time. Thank you for Jesus, our great teacher. Amen. Thanks for listening to this message. Stay safe and God bless.